Hey guys, welcome back to Max House Donovan Unification. We continue our coverage of the UGL group stage. We are in group C. You can see here that we have already covered the first three matches and are now on the final, not the final, close to finalizing this group. We are on the losers round, Odoles against Kubini. You see the draft over here. Kubini banned Sisters of Battle, Imperial Guard, Odoles banned Orcs and Thousand Suns. So this means that Kubini could first pick his uh, main faction Chaos Marines. He also picked Emperor's Children and Steel Legion. Odoles on the other side picked Elder, Dark Angels and Space Marines. So let's see what they do on the first map on Titans 4. And here we are on the first map, Titans 4. We have on the southern side playing Emperor's Children, it is Kubini. On the northern side playing Dark Angels, it is Odoles. Odoless goes for a, gener open a generator opener and three scouts. Second tech servitor tells me that he's gonna add a armory, probably. Uh, you wouldn't need a second servitor if you... Uh, oh, a second builder, that is, but if you do not want to build an armory. There you go. One scout goes over here. The other scout's probably going from the other side. Kubini says, oh my god. Uh, already misclick. Okay, what did he do? Not sure what he did, um, but yeah, we have Celebrate two Pleasure Cultist Squad and a Slaneshi Lord. Did he kill his own squad or did he cancel it and had to build it again? I'm not sure, but yeah, only two uh, capping squads on this large map is probably not advised. I would have suggested... Oh, okay. maybe he w didn't want to put a seismic charge here, but something over here or something. Interesting uh, idea to use the... Uh, uh, excess power you have with Emperor's Children to, into a um, mine, but I would really recommend to have three Blasher Cult Squad. Or if you do not have two Blasher Cult Squad, you want to have a barracks with additional units. He goes for Stubborn, which is an upgrade you always want to get if you have the armory. It's really cheap and does good stuff. One, two, three scouts still. Four scouts, but one is not microed. Mighty against this statue over here. One squad coming in. They can kill the pleasure cult squad, but they can also try to force melee combat and do a lot of disruption. You see in time for the decap over here, it looks like it. He's focusing his attention over here. You can see it, but there's a Sunashi Lord. So no way you were gonna decap it under the fire from the Sunashi Lord. Or even if you manage to do so with some reinforcements, it is not worth it. He remembers his scouts over here. The scouts here are done uh, also. Uh, he needs to work on his shift click a bit, so they could have already shift clicked over here or be aggressive over here or even on the middle. His uh, point is up, this point is going up, there's gonna be the barracks, the possessed conduit over here. On this side, is he upgrading his points? He's not. He has a lot of power going as he did the two gen opener. You should upgrade your listing post as soon as you can. There's now the Slaneshi Lord coming in. These Flash of Scouts will get the decap. They will be get reinforced. Yes, they will. And the Slaneshi Lord will kill scouts for days, I think. There goes another scout. Uh, he should not focus on the Tech Marine, but rather on the scouts. The uh, Tech Marine you will not kill, but scouts you will. Especially the one with the uh, spot with the sniper rifles. This will be a lot of requisition down the drain. They cost... <laughs> Each model you kill is 80 requisition and 20 power. And there, poof, 80 requisition and 20 power gone. Without dealing a lot of damage against this, this Lanesh Lord, this is not a favorable trade. You should never ever trade with um, uh, scouts uh, against this Lanesh Lord. They're, yeah, they're even better suited in melee. Not sure if Kubini forces melee. There's no need to force melee. Just stand here, shoot these scouts in the forehead and they will die. Uh, decap over here, or at least um, prevent the cap. So economy-wise, if Kubini will upgrade his listening post, please do me a favor and upgrade your listening post. Um, then oh, the seismic charge going off over here. I think it doesn't do a lot of damage It does do a big oomph and a big disruption over here. There's no need to run away over here I don't I don't understand it. There, there's he could kill all most of these scouts and be in a good shape um, um, I think he ran over here that the position over here was very favorable Not sure why he ran away and again. I ponder on it uh, not ponder it. I Say it again and again upgrade your listening post. You have 400 power to spend you can not spend all that power on tier 2. I mean you can, but it uh, would probably not be worth it. Yeah, so delayed upgrading his listing posts over here. Should probably upgrade those two points as well. 
If you go for the double gen opener, you need to upgrade your listen posts as soon as they are finished, as you have a lot of power. You get power from the generators, you get power from the flash occultists, and yeah, I think, yeah, I'm um, not sure if melee combat is the way to go. Slash Lord was doing very fine in range combat, but now he is pushed back by more and more scouts. The scouts do, do not get the T cap over here, but will get the uh, pleasure slaves in the meantime. Is tier 2 on the way? Not yet, he do not have the money. Again, upgrade your listing post to get more blue money. Losing the whole squad over here, losing the Slanesh Lord, barely. Yeah, please, do me a favor, upgrade it. On the other side, we have um, better economy for Odorless S. He upgraded his listing post, at least one. Two upgraded listing posts, this is not kept. He was busy decapping over here. And this is a very interesting fight. They, this, they, the cultists will not deal a lot of damage in melee, um, but do a lot of knockback. So they can delay this fight for longer and longer. But the main problem is now in his base. There is scouts everywhere. The Sanesh Lord is still alive, maybe? Yeah, it is. And yeah, doing, as I said, doing, yeah, using his trucks, peeling off models left and right. If this was upgraded, yeah. <laughs> As I said, he should have upgraded it way earlier, then you would have also a defensive position. He will lose his uh, Danish Lord, but you see, he killed three more scout models in the meantime. So it is in the end cost effective, even if you lose your Slanesh Lord. You can upgrade, uh, get him back later, or even, um, I mean, you want it on the field. It's the only uh, thing that prevents you from the Dark Angels taking over. Uh, this got not built. This is still not being... Um, upgraded he gets now tier 2 and some generators so probably if he gets generators he gets uh, goes for vehicles what i would recommend is to send one of your servitors probably your servitor not a tech marine um, to one of the select deposits and as soon as you hit tier 2 you build a, a thermoplasma generator you may think yeah but then the thermoplasma generator gets uh, sniped but i tell you what a thermoplasma generator is the building in the game that um brings back his costs the, the quickest, in a, in a sense, if that makes sense. Like, uh, that the investment pays for itself the quickest is the Thermoplasma Generator. I think Listing Post and Thermoplasma Generator, like the first Listing Post, not upgraded one once, um, but yeah, are very, very cost effective. So instead of building more generators over here, it would be good to have um, a Thermoplasma Generator uh, being built. He could also now put in his um, machine code, machine knave. I opt to not go for it yet. Tier 2 is almost finished for Emperor's certain economy is still not as good as he only has three points, but at least now upgraded. <coughs> um, yeah, he could, could add, uh, could go for go for grenades a little late on the grenades. He will finish tier 2 before his grenades are finished, so this is Oh, he even cancels it! Warp talents are not as great without grenades. Oh, so this is not the best play in this spot. But he does not go for. He go for, goes for World of Secrets. So this means he is more requisition hungry and should upgrade his remaining listening post. He will not need the power per se to uh, get all the units out from the World of Secrets. He goes for fast tier 3 with Might of the Deathwing. So you want now normally to uh, start some so this is basically just a fast tier 3 but he goes for the death wing you can go for the death wing but, but a fast tier 3 is normally better uh, I mean all the paths are normally better with um, a better company because you can get like lion in tier 3 and stuff so not sure but he seems to like death wing we see a sword in the other game again what was it in the first round was it against oh, uh, it must be against Futomaki where he did go Deathwing but then the game uh, had a, had a desync. Now we have the Bob Talents but they do not have the crack grenade so they will not be as powerful. Actually two squads will take this down um, using his drugs here to save this model. No, he's not using his drugs to not save his model so it has some micro mistakes on both sides. This is now get taken over and as I said I would really like uh, once used, um, one select deposit being used. The sentry post here will stand for ages. This uh, fallen missionary is cool and all, but it will take quite a long time. These, why, why do they run away from scouts again? Just make them in red stands, and one to one squad and one to the other squad, and then this is 
Easy nice. pickings for you. Do not even need to micro if they're as long as they're do not ne near to a sentry post. You can just yeah move them there and call it a day. He now adds the uh, icon bearers as he wants more squads with plasma pistols. What you really also want is a what is it called a um, the the hero the, the demonic building that uh, grants access to the. The saucer, which also has a good plasma pistol. But yeah, we have now the chief librarian over here. So he knows that he, his opponent is in tier 3. Going for the Deathwing Apothecary, adding the Deathwing Orbiter Relay, getting the Chaplain. Yeah, the, the Apothecary, the, the librarian you could have gotten earlier without going tier 3 first, but now he's adding Assault Terminators. I'm not sure. Yeah, okay, against these uh, warp tenants probably. Uh, it's a melee. They are melee focused, so if you can match them in melee with a unit that um, beats them, this is probably a good choice. You also now have the apothecary coming in. The apothecary can help your assault terminators going into melee. There's the, the chief librarian. What you really want to do also is getting the book of salvation, which makes units around morale immune. But uh, this is only the uh, deathwing apothecary. That's not deathwing terminators. Are they summoned in somewhere else or did he forgot about them? They are not yet on the field. He goes for intraceable, giving the infantry even more upgrades and there they come. I think they come with a big drop pod over here. Oh, no, they just get summoned in. So now the apothecary wants to join him. The chief librarian is moving away. He wants a ranged terminator squad to go about him. I mean, he has this mighty stuff and all using... Uh, no, it was just an attack. More apothecaries coming in. So this is probably a fight. The uh, terminators will win uh, once the trucks are out, I think, really. Handily, the chaplain, the, the um, librarian is uh, the chaplain is now into melee with the Sanesh Lord and kind of losing it because the Sanesh Lord is just so good. There he goes. But the Potter takes over his place. I <laughs> don't think a Potter will be the, the deal here. But I, I, I wait more Terminators. This is only one Terminator squad. I wait range Terminators joining in the fight here soonish. There come some more Terminators. I hope they are ranged Terminators to uh, help supplement this position. And there are Deathwing Terminators. But you can go for Assault Cannons or even Plasma Cannons on those units with some more stuff. And yeah, this uh, standard bearer will not be long for this world. Is there something coming from Kubini is the question. Is he getting tier 3? No, he gets a Rhino. Okay, and as I said, the... Uh, so it's not the world of secrets, but the, the hero, uh, the demonic building from Emperor Certain will allow you to get um, the sorcerer, which is really nice. Just as a fighter unit, as a combatant. These Deathwing Terminators, but this, this is the third. This is the salt, and this is the standard variant. The salt will run away. Okay, not sure why actually. Flabarian still on low HP. And now he's adding the the uh, Thermal Blossom Trader a little late. Another Assault Terminator squad. So we have now soon to be three Assault Terminator squads and one Range Terminator. The fight is still going on. They are getting marked, so they increase uh, the damage they take. I hope there's now the second Assault Terminator squad coming in soon to um, yeah break this line over here. You have now a problem with anti-vehicle. We have seen this in the cast of in Mr. Landshark's channel, where Deathwing struggles a bit with anti-vehicle because their uh, cycle missile launches have really low damage output. Um, so you want to have a Dreadnought or two. He has no vehicle pop, so you want to have a, a machine nave, and then you can add some Deathwing Dreadnoughts, which are really, really the kicker. Uh, Mortis Dreadnought, for example, or even the standard Dreadnought, you can get last cannons from the Mortis Dreadnoughts. So these will make short work of all the different Rhinos uh, hitting the field right now. The Rhinos for now are just damaged sponges. They're moving on the backside, coming over here in a second, I guess. Can we see it? Yeah, there they come. Um, but yeah, this is tier 3 against tier 2. I don't think... I mean, Emperor Surgeon are very strong and can fight from behind. There's now the barracks actually added. The barracks are probably meant to get some more infantry pop and get the uh, I think you build it from the uh, yes the death and company master you build from your from your um, 
chapter building from your wing building, not from your barracks. Barracks uh, later tiers for Dark Angels is not very uh, useful building except for the pop increase. But you do not need a pop increase. What you need is vehicles. You have a lot of green money to spare. You can get the vehicle, the, the green money upgrade if you haven't already, and then get some, as I said, some some dreadnoughts. Uh, one uh, one basically one dreadnought would save him the day over here. Just one dreadnought parked over here with less cannons will make short work of these listening posts. Even if any vehicle that comes out of this place will be killed very soon. And yeah, these <laughs> try to base trade, but I don't not think if this is uh, really possible. Um, you could even send in. Uh, a builder and uh, save up a bit and then build a second command center over here. Command center! We are not in Starcraft, the second fortress here. So he loses quite a lot of models for just basically no no real reason, just attacking this point. K kill the listening posts that are firing you 24-7, uh, not sure. And the chaplain, will he be able to, to uh, deal with these fully upgraded warp talent bands? I do not think he will. Um, they can now base trade against him. The chaplain will attack over here, but if they mark him and focus him down, I think they can deal, deal with it. Um, now they're focusing on the listening post, which is good. They could kill the listening post. Yeah, there you go, throwing two grenades, but one um, squad needs to focus it. And you see the damage, especially the morale damage, is uh, quite high. He kills a, a, a unit, but I do not know why he backs out of here. If he was committing for base trade, then do it. But now going back where your whole base lies in shambles, there are now <laughs> one uh, cyclone missile launcher, but the damage, as I said, isn't really high. Um, there was the uh, the thing. You now he has the escape squad, which I really like. Uh, I like the detail that these uh, marines have ultramarines and everything on them. So they are very. Yeah, this looks like a bit like an apothecary, but it could be uh, that they are just the white helmets. Makes it look for me to uh, like an apothecary. Yeah, you can. Can you now kill these uh, Terminators? I do not think you can right now as you have lost the whole uh, stuff. But yeah, this is a very topsy-turvy game. A lot of float over here. I think, as I said, a Dreadnought or two would be very, very much needed to fight this. Not the barracks, but um, yeah. If you go uh, Deathwing Terminators, um, you really want to have some anti-vehicle at hand, which will be the Dreadnoughts. Yeah, they, they will now uh, defeat this warp talent band. They killed it, or it was deleted. Looked like that they killed it, not sure. There's now a Sonic Scorpion, again a vehicle that they cannot really deal with. Sonic Scorpion would be a good addition um, earlier, uh, instead of those Rhinos. The Rhinos did well, I'm not gonna say that they are, were a bad choice, but yeah, the uh, Sonic Scorpion would have been a good help for it. Or even the uh, aircraft unit, the Hell Blade, Hell Talon, Sonic Hell Talon, Sonic Hell Blade. I think it's the Sonic, Sonic Hell Talon. Um, yeah, these uh, assault marines cannot fire in the air, so this would be a, a assault. Assault terminates cannot fire in the air, and all the while the uh, taken hold victory was actually ticking. So this finishes the game. Not that he would have uh, not won otherwise. So yeah, uh, GG is the orderless for winning this game. He did a good uh, early game and a, a good tier three rush. Um, and as I said, he um, only lacks the wisdom in getting some vehicles down earlier or getting, uh, making his economy uh, a little more worthwhile and getting some um, requisition upgrades because I, I didn't see them. Maybe he did them, but yeah, uh, should have gotten it earlier. What you also want to do uh, maybe for, for the future is get the uh, heroes earlier that they will turn into their um, into the Terminator variants also. For Kubini, I think the opener was a little um, too slow with only two pleasure cultists. You want to have three to uh, be around this very large map. You do not have as much points as the map size suggests, but um, you, you have enough that it um, will allow for three pleasure cultists, especially if you do not want to go for noise marines, then you want to have more pleasure cultists to at least supplement your forces a bit um, and then, yeah, the big part was probably the trading on this point. You see a lot of dead um, uh, scouts still lying over here. If he would have just not forced melee combat at this point, he could have peeled off even more models and made it worthwhile. Um, so this is the big part, I think, for this game. But okay, GG is the orderless. He goes. Uh, he now has a lead of 1-0. Let's see what map Kubini picks. 
And here you are on the second map, Meeting of Minds. On the left side, playing Space Marines, it is Odorless. On the right side, playing his signature Chaos Space Marines, it is Kubini. And if this isn't a classic matchup, I do not know what is. It's Space Marines against Chaos Space Marines on the only map Dawn of War has ever offered us to, uh, to the players. It's Meeting of Minds. We have three cultist squad into a Chaos Armory, so we will see, we'll, we'll see some uh, Cultist vs. Grenade Launchers, but um, again, my usual complaint, uh, you will probably not get the Grenade Launchers right away, or, or you could, you could rally your first one or two Cultist Squad over here and use the Grenade Launchers, but he doesn't, so may as well get the Generator first for some more income. Yeah, I, I will not stop ranting about it, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> so he, um, Odalis goes for two Scouts into Space Marines, Genless Opener, so he could go could have gotten a second, um, a third scout, but he opts for probably three squads of Space Marines, which you can if you do not go, uh, if you go genless, you can go for three uh, Space Marines. One thing, minor thing, one squad of Space Marines will not probably do a lot on the enemy. Might as well cap this point with the Space Marines, and this will make up for the time that the second Space Marine squad will be built, and then you have two squads going out at the same time and have a point capped at the same time. So this is, would be my little input to this build order. Cold is now coming in with the grenades, so maybe it uh, was worthwhile getting it. Um, they can probably kill this builder, but they can most importantly kill scouts uh, with this grenade launch very well. So if you go around and find the scout squad, let's see how they deal against space marines. Sp space marines are getting in range like this, this is not good for the cultists. They're going even into melee with their power armored elbows here. <laughs> I mean, if they run away, you can just use melee uh, range combat and kill a peel of models, I think. But he does not want to um, get some grenade launcher uh, stuff in his face. He now moves into the base, actually. Um, not sure if this is advice. He wants to snipe a builder or two, I think. But you see the red circle around him. His uh, morale stuff is damaged. What is it? Protecting increases units and hurts enemy morale regeneration. So the morale regeneration is lower, but they still uh, are, have a positive regeneration. He finished this pose. He did so, and there's an upgrade pose. Not sure what these space marines inside the enemy base are supposed to do here. They will be better in just um, cap camping this point, trying to kill this point, for example. Right in enemy base, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, what what their their plan is. And as I said, having this good uh, point earlier would have helped him. Then his scouts would have already been here, able to cap this, or even cap this point of the enemy. But back to the action, these guys lose a hell of a lot of models as they are deep into enemy territory. Um, as I said, try to kill this listing post or something. Yes, he delays the economy for Kubini by quite a lot, but Kubini has a lot of... Um, he has already two generators, so he can make up for it by upgrading his listing post. And can also start here too, if he really wants to. So he is in a very good spot, whereas um, Odorless does not have a gen yet. He would need to add a gen at some point. He, he does that, as I say it, and then he can maybe do something here. You can also add the Force Commander if you want to be more aggressive in Tier 1. But yeah, there is some harm done. I, I was about to say no real harm done. There, there, there was some harm done, but now it's just standing here again. Um, is killing of models but you will be able to kill this listening post eventually which is uh, the real kicker here and even now the scouts coming in to capture this point but they were uh, busy capturing their own points for uh, too long I think a little slip up here as well and is here too Kubini please pick the button I know you can do it <laughs> there's a yeah he's busy microing and all but uh, he's uh, he needs to get here too. He has all the resources in the world. There's no need to stay here or add a possessed conduit or something to make uh, use of your money. There's no need to float as much as you do. Space Marines on the other hand do not have as much resource on the hand. A little slip, slip up over here. But they do have enough power if they want to get to tier 2. If they save up a little requisition. This is not getting built up. Is he? Now finally. So this is like a very delayed uh, tier, tier 2 in that he could also, if he really wants to uh, get a turret over here or in this cover, so it, it would help him capture this point. Odorless will finish the cap point capturing over here. His scouts are over here now fighting with him. They would be better served 
in getting the critical locations um, they will take too much damage and will not add uh, much to this fight um, he finishes the point over here and now should go for the for the criticals I do not think that you will be able to do much with them over here scouts now move uh, the space is now moving away um, standing in the heavy cover I think you should just e e retreat now to your base there's no way you can fight so much grenade launchers on the field just even in heavy cover you would need to uh, actually need to go in melee but you probably want to uh, stabilize a bit he could go tier 2 and he is adding armory as well so getting s maybe some bionics or getting more generators now would be a, a good um, idea he adds a generator in this exposed position not the best this space marine squad is only one unit alive and will die you see power of the grenade launchers you cannot fight it in, in, range, in range you want to go into melee you could in theory add a Assault Terminator, uh, Assault Terminator, I was, I'm still in the, in the other, in the other game, some Assault Marines and jump into melee and then um, do stuff. He's tier 2 now, getting another, replacing Cultist Squad, okay, he has a lot of resources, so he should make use of it in uh, some way or another. Getting vehicles, getting the Thermoplasma Generators up, for example, getting uh, the Thorn Princess. As he has a relic, no, he does not have a relic, so you cannot get a Thorn Princess. That's sad for him. T2 almost finished for Kubini, uh, for Odalis as well. And yeah, Kubini floating hell of a lot of uh, resources now. Needs to get some stuff. Machine pit it is, so you want to get more power generators. And as I said, the Slack Deposit is the real kicker on this map to have for you. There's also a Machine Cult now being added by Odalis. Odalis has better economy as he has more map control but Kubini is on the way to regaining it. He has a lot of money in the bank that is not helping him now very much. Um, what does he go for? Cultus infiltration. So you have Cultus and then vehicle support. Uh, I like. I like this uh, choice. You do not get, if you do not get um, space marines out you do not need all the space marine upgrades uh, in that sense. Hell talents it is. On this map, hell tenants I get can get. Uh, I, I can understand. You have a lot of angles on the side where you come in and be a little mobile and make use of the, uh, the that it is a large map in that sense. Here you can stand out of the firing arc from this listening post and pepper it a bit. But the coldest infiltration will be done now. There you go. Coldest are infiltrated. The space marine st still just walking about. What is he adding over here with the machine code? A land speeder, <laughs> land speeder tempest. So air fight commands, and I think the hell talents will win this. Um, and as I said, you want more power. You want to have these slack deposits under your control if possible. This also is is, is um, um, true for Odalis here. As I said, the in the previous game, these thermal rust generators do pay for themselves very very fast. And yeah, Lens Peter Tempest getting now the crack missiles and yeah, but they, there's now two versus one but without the crack missiles the damage is very minor whereas the damage from the Hell Talent should be alright against aircraft, they have the less cannons they can fire at air but well, yeah, it was repaired, that's why. Um, if you move a little closer you can also uh, throw its bomb uh, that does mainly anti-infantry damage but still. One health Helen out, what is he adding? Now a defiler. Infantry pop upgrades, some sacrificial circles. So I'm I'm interested in what he will go from here. Could add the aspiring champions if he really wants to. Yeah, but now they get uh, focused on by now. Uh, soon to be three uh well there's a skull broke detecting these um coldest. Now there's a defiler. The defiler cannot hit air, I think, or is it? It is at least trying to. Interesting. Not hit a beast that can hit air. But he has now the. Uh, yeah, there you go. The horror squad. That's why he got the um, cap increase, so he can add now horrors, maybe two squads. And as I said, the slack deposits are juicy, juicy money just laying there. You could maybe opt for Predator, but um, other than that, what is your anti-vehicle? It is Horrors. Mainly Horrors. Um, 
and health talents. But health talents are get countered by these land speeders. I think the horse, if you get two squads, it is. One squad is probably not enough. You want to have two squads um, for three land speeders. What is the plan for Odorless? Getting more land speed or tempest, that is. That is his plan for now. Has a lot of power. Can upgrade his listening post or um, should upgrade his listening post, I should say, to um, e equalize his economy a bit. Um, something we noticed in the first game as well that he floated a lot of power without um, spending it. And as I said, you can equalize your economy if you upgrade listening post or if you get the economy upgrades, which will gives you um, a better uh, position for later game posi uh, later game parts as well. Is he getting some weapons? He is getting the heavy bolter. The heavy bolter does not replace. Da -da -da -da. Replaces all the cannons with heavy bolters. Yeah, this that's okay. Heavy flamers. Oh, I, I I'm like uh, I like the uh, missile launchers the most. And there the horror is coming in. Uh, they need to focus down these um, lands with the tempest and that they do. Really big chunk of damage done with the first two volleys and this, the third, the fourth volley would probably kill it. There you go. Space Marines are busy um, getting knocked around by the defilers here. So these um, lands with the tempest need to run away. The defiler is not going down, not, not anytime soon. And down goes the tempest. Poof! In a big smoke, it just explo explodes. The pleasure, pleasure. The normal cultists here are just busy. And at some point they will kill it. It will take some time, but they will do. Yeah, so it's now Space Marines with missile launchers, which are meant to um, counter the defilers. Uh, what do we get here? Even more defilers. And as I said, yeah, two horrors. He did exactly what I said. Getting two horrors is then enough. One horror squad will probably, most of the time, not be enough. You want to have two. And yeah, for economy, it's going back into Kubini's favor now that he uh, managed to get his points back. Um, Odoless didn't keep up the pressure, so he could take his points back, and now the pressure is in his base. This uh, badly placed generator is getting taken down. It's very um, tempting to get the generator right in space where your builder is, but yeah, getting the generators in your base is um, generally advised. You normally do not want to have the power as quickly as you would think you would need it um, in the, in the, in the f actually uh, game. Two upgraded Space Marine squads with missile launchers. One has no upgrades. He could go for the more special weapon upgrade here as well. And now, finally, the first time of generator is up. Might as well get a second one. Why not? There's there's no reason. There's no rule written that you can only get one uh, term of Rustum generator. Might as well get the next one. And what does he go for? Even more horrors. Did the horrors die? No. Once. Both horrors are still alive, so I mean you could go in the base and just kill generators for days That would be one option. The space marines with only two uh, Missile launchers will not counter the fires. The fighters can just uh, Yeah, do what they do here and just use the artillery and break the morale. These land speeder tempests get countered by the uh, horror squads. There's now a source a lot coming in. Can throw some doom bolts for some added um, damage and stuff he could also get for the Chains of Torment upgrade if he really wants to. There's even now a Warp Smith going out. And what is being pulled in? More more horrors, I guess. Yeah, there you go. There's no way. He has just more stuff. This is what I always tell you. More stuff beats less stuff. We have, if you look at the caps, there's only 6 infantry cap used by Odoless and 15-12 uh, for Kubini. He could go tier 3 as well if he wants. He's almost finished tier 3 though. Jesus Christ, there will be some tier 3 stuff heading his way. He needs some infantry cap uh, upgrades and then get obliterators, I think would be a good choice. Um, obliterators, chosen, terminators, possessed, whatever, name it, you, you can get it. You can get also some more spe specialization upgrades for your predators. But yeah, this this game is over. There's no way he's gonna return it. Yes, these hell talent will probably be dealt with by this uh, Landspeed of Tempest, but that is his only victory here. He's <laughs> holding this point, but there's like a whole army over here. There's like four horror squads, if I counted correctly, if one didn't die or wasn't called in. And yeah, it's the, yeah, the warp smith is here repairing the defilers. I like this. I like this a lot. The warp uh, smith is really tanky. And yeah, orderless calls GG. So it's now 1-1 one, one for Kubini. Uh, as I said, there were some mistakes, but mistakes were made on both sides. And Kubini had a better um, tier 2 idea with the cultists 
with the um, later on the horrors. The Hell Talent was countered by the Landspeeder Tempest, but the Landspeeder Tempest in turn was countered by the Horror Squads and the Space Marine Squads was countered by the Defilers. Uh, in general, the T1 aggression backfired for Odoless here. You do not walk. I, I, I want a meme of um, like you do not simply walk to Mordor here. You do not simply walk in an enemy base and kill it or something, especially on Meeting of Minds where there are so many points. The idea of early aggression is that you take map control. So killing this listing post faster would be an idea, getting the decap. And as I said, if he had kept this point with Space Marines, then the first scout squad would be uh, here more earlier and could have gotten this point and later this point kept. And then, yeah, set up shop, maybe even get a cheeky turret or so, because the the cultists cannot deal with turrets. They can get, deal with listening posts and tactical marines, but they cannot deal with turrets. Like a turret over here, or if you get this point like a turret behind the listening post or something, would have made it really, really hard for Kobini to come in. Kobini, on the other hand, was ready to go to two and could counter the turret. So it's a, yeah, it goes either way. But yeah, I'm talking too much. Um, this was a good game. I liked it a lot. We will now head to the deciders match where, yeah, Odoras is again on the picking part for the map. The matchup will be Steel Legion for Kubini against Eldar for Odoless. So this is going to be interesting. And here we are on the final map on Fadamorga. On the north side playing Steel Legion we have Kubini. On the southern side playing Eldar we have Odoless. Going for Aspect Portal into two Guardians which is classic. Uh, also Fleet of Foot Research. He goes for a tier 2 rush it seems. No, Relay Station. Or he goes for Legionnaires with Grenade Launchers. I think this is what he's going with this opener. Uh, getting the three pioneers is basically a no-brainer. And infantry doctrine. To build is to conquer. He, he stopped it so you can get the infiltration upgrade but infiltration upgrade will need some uh, generator. Now going for legionnaires. Either he goes for legionnaires to cap fast and then still going for tier 2 rush but then you would need three generators. Uh, but yeah he uses his squads to uh, cap outside. Maybe he just gets the infiltration. Um, both Guardians on this side is interesting. Going for Rangers with Infiltration. Okay, so he wants to use the uh, lack of early detection unless you go for Commissars with these Rangers. So he could Orders. counter these Grenade Launcher guys really, really good. Um, what you really want with um, Steel Legion especially as you are having the slow cap Pioneers is a turret over here as your turret is so strong. Location if you would secure. Have, for example, if you have a really aggressive opener with Eldar where you just run your first two uh, Guardians to the enemy base, these Pioneers cannot deal with it. They will die and cannot cap points and you will have even a slower economy. So look at this economy, 26 uh, to 10 against 32 and 10, but he has already his listing posts on the way, whereas his points are now about just to be captured. Um, you have a slow economy start for Steel Legion. There's now two um, Legionnaires here with grenades, <laughs> but the rangers are on the other side, which is sad for them. They will not kill these units uh, here, they finish the uh, listening post, and this is the important part. If you get these uh, four points, you're, you're fine. You do not really need the relic per se, but again, a, a turret over here would have dealt with the rangers. They could have still um, delayed your relic, I think. But yeah, now um, Dark Reaper aspect stone is there. No, not enough resources as of yet. But looking at the map position, I like it more for uh, Kobini as he um, delays two points, whereas these Rangers maybe can delay another point. They can, if they reinforce, they will make it one. And they did make it, and even build a point. Very nice, very nice. No the cap possible. So this is now one point advantage for the Steel Legion, and the Steel Legion has. Guys with grenade launchers inside, so if these... Um, okay, he, he cancelled it and made some holding banshees. I think this is a good idea, especially now that they I still have their special text on these on these ladies, uh, which is actually an oversight, will be removed in the next version. But the special attack thing could deal with these legionnaires with grenade launchers. But yeah, if you camp the enemy production, kill the enemy economy, it's really dire for him. Killing the generator will be in increasing his odds even more. Now the benches will come out, so one squad... Come on, kite it. One squad can fire, the other one runs away. And with the grenade launchers, yeah. Using fleet of foot, but still. Is it friendly firing with the grenade launchers? Not sure. There's the point upgraded, so this is now a good point 
uh, where you want to leave the base. The rangers are still inside the enemy base and now spreading their damage. If they continue firing here, you can kill it, especially now, uh, especially that uh, in the sense that. My words. Steel Legion cannot repair stuff in T1. Uh, so this would be a thing. But Rangers now coming in. Now this can be nasty for these uh, Legionnaires over here. It will take quite a lot of damage and morale damage as well. Yeah, one model goes down, morale breaks. But they fire on the ground! Oh, this was nice. It was a nice little uh, maneuver to fire on the ground for some uh, knockback basically. The damage isn't really there with these grenade launchers as, as the morale is broken, but still. Knocking those guys down is really nice. And there's the Commissar for detection purposes, so he knows what detects and Commissar going into melee with his rangers. And yeah, he will probably win this. Listening post over here. The listening post for Steel Legion can fire without being upgraded. They can at least a bit fire without upgraded. They will. Uh, they can fire more if you, of course, upgrade them. Their relay station is he getting tier 2? Or did he finish it? No, he's adding Commissars now. Uh, plasma generators, listening posts, so very looking, doesn't look so um, bad for Elder here. <laughs> Even trying a sneaky cap with the one guardian over here, he would have been better used for a critical location because this is not gonna, gonna, uh, gonna work out to so this one unit. <laughs> okay, there's some howling benches supported by these rangers, so this is a very interesting opener. I like, I like it, like to see new stuff. But as I said, the listening post can normally fire. Yeah, you see it. it comes some lasers out of this listening post. Uh, maybe this is some weird angles on them. I need to check that actually. Um, Legioners over here running left and right. These Legioners have lost morale. There are some pioneers trying to cap it, but I do not think they will be able to. This is gonna be a, gonna be rough for Kubini here. The map position is now better for Elder. The start wasn't the greatest, but uh, it's now getting better. He needs to upgrade his points. What is he doing? He goes tier 2, but upgrading this point would have benefited his oh, continued um, combat over here, as well as one turret over here will uh, help you so much. The turret for Sea Legion are really strong. They are um, building met armor, which is another thing they will that will be adjusted in uh, the next version. But for now, they have very strong turrets in the armor class, so they will not die as easily, deal a lot of damage, have a long range, so yeah. Strong turrets for them. Big, big damage on these uh, ladies, but yeah, they, they can uh, move in and this squad can be dealt with with the rangers in the sense that they can break their morale and without morale, uh, with morale broken, you only have 10% accuracy, 10% of your accuracy, I think. 90% accuracy buff if your mar is broken. So good luck killing units with that. Commissar being annoying yet <laughs> guarding really trying to, to kill this commissar will not be able to. But yeah, your map position is better. Hopefully tier 2 is started. It is almost done. Tier 2 is done. Not, not yet for Steel Legion. So this is some painful minute. Now upgrading this listen post I think. Yes. Um, a little late on that part. I, I know. But he, he does it. What is this? Aura from the Commissar, I guess. Looks interesting. Now tier 2 is done, so you can add some Deep Strike Stormtroopers, but they cost a lot of power. So you want to have another generator here, I think. Because they cost like 145 power or something like that. So you really want to have more power. Rangers being infiltrated. Uh, yeah, I stick on the other side just for the Rangers, I think. He's tier 2 now as well. Hopefully getting the upgrade. Come on, come on, getting the upgrade. Get the upgrade you want it. So what was nice, but get the upgrade. It's, you <laughs> Again, I see it from elder player not getting the upgrade. The the target, at least the targets. The armor is depends if you if you want to for some HP of your infantry squads. If you have the mindset that my I will use the fleet foot micro so well that I do not use will not get any shots in, um, then you can argue you're not getting the. Uh, not getting the armor upgrade, but the, the targeters upgrade, the uh, range damage increase is a no-brainer upgrade. It benefits all Elder Infantry, like all. Now getting some aspects like Striking Scorpions. Striking Scorpions also benefit from the uh, um, infiltration research, just so you know. Can, can be a point why you get them. Also some melee squads against these guys will be a good idea. I hear some 
Kommissar. Trying to get some damage done on the listening post. Rangers. Oh, getting dealt. And there's some Wraith God aspects on Wraith Lord, not God. You can go Wraith Lord. You get now the Striking Scorpions. He now gets, yeah, now you get the Enhanced Optic. Gets the Power Upgrade. Uh, not like the power upgrade in the sense you are this costs 200 requisition you could just get another power generator look at how much it gives you it only provides you plus nine another generator would provide you plus 10 and cost less so always um, always go for generators first and then the upgrade second these ladies will probably yeah there's no gun on the side and this and top firing as well so they're not very good against buildings per se Especially now that the pioneer is coming in. Now the first armored fist come here. Getting he could go for heavy bolters, but needs an upgrade. Other than that, it's just a really nice uh, camera. Actually, it can summon a special legionnaire squad if you have enough requisition for it to do some magics. Wraith Lord now coming in. Um, he, he saw the vehicles right, so he could go for Wraith Lords with bright lances. Oh, getting, yeah, the chat Spectre uh, aspect zone, why not? Now adding generator, so there you go. He still could go for the bright lens, if you ask me. No, why not double down on anti-infantry, uh, anti-vehicle? Or is he just using it into melee? With this mighty Wraith Thought, I think it's called. Look at it also being red. Probably from the last engagements, I think. Or is it glowing red because it's like on fire or something come on he's now getting the bright lens yes so you can just use the range stance and yeah because the fire on the move accuracy isn't the greatest you can use it in uh if you stand stand still for a bit yeah now striking scoping but being detected by the commissar tank bunker is now there but he goes for infantry i so i do not know what uh upgrades he gets did he go for the... no, not no improved recoil system. You can go for improved recoil system and then add some less cannon support teams to deal with these uh, Wraith Lord, I think, if you get like two or three. But yeah, again, the economy, I think, in favor for the Elder and the Elder. Now, what did they get? Armor upgrade, very nice. And getting now more cap to probably get another Wraith Lord or two. Wraith Lord on this side, chasing the Rhinos. What is detecting? Ah, here. He put out a uh, Steel Legion Commissar over here. Interesting. You could also, if you if you really uh, want to be uh, cheeky, at a uh, support platform over here and give it a... Uh, what is the anti-vehicle upgrade for it called again? The ATV upgrade. It has quite a long range, so it can fire, I think, up to here and have some pot shots on these, um, on these uh, cameras. He now has also some fire dragons. I, I like the, the prioritization of the... Uh, Shadow Spectres. Shadow Spectres are better, but um, have only limit of one. If you want to have more anti-vehicle, you might as well add some Fire Dragons. Fire Dragons have a great synergy with, for example, a Falcon, because you can just jump in, because they have low range, you can jump them in and use, basically jump them out right next to the building or vehicle you want to kill, so the low range doesn't really matter. And what is really the kicker for this fire Warriors. Is it Fire Warriors? Jesus Christ, the names. Fire Dragons. But don't go for a, another um, Wraith Lord. Fire Dragons is that they have basically um, Terminator armor. Heavy infantry, high armor. So they do not die very easily. You can use them, for example, also if you have problems with ranged squads, you put them in melee stands. They will not deal any damage in melee, but they will at, at least keep the enemy from doing stuff. There's the uh, Striking Scorpions again. <laughs> this time, do they have the Exarch? The Exarch is uh, really good with them, but the Exarch could uh, help deal with those guys faster. They now can go for the decap. Yeah, this, this looks really bad. Is he getting anything from the tank bunker? He's not. Um, no fire support spots. And yeah, this no no real, uh, not even Stormtroopers. I'm, I'm really Confused. Stormtroopers are basically your go-to unit in tier 2, especially if you go for infantry uh, doctrine over here. But this looks really bad now. Losing this point will probably use this um, tank bunker over here. It's only two minutes left before the take and hold victory will kick in. You, you could send a unit just to cap this point in the middle just to be extra sure about it. But yeah, there's now some rockets firing here. But yeah, I think this, this looks uh, over to me. Last fight, last hurrah here in the 
and the uh, Steel Legion base leading the Wraith Lord using his mighty backhand. He uses his backhand more often than his sword, I feel. <laughs> and now using his flame a bit. And yeah, come on, I want to see your mighty sword being used against some Steel Legion listeners. Again, a backhand, come on, use your sword. <laughs> And yeah, the Shadow Spectre is moving in um, and Fire Dragons. He can't backhand like three times in a row. Now he uses Sword for once. There you go. Backhand again. He really likes his backhand. Backhand uh, feels more appropriate to him. <laughs> but yeah, killing the Listen Post probably focusing down on Generators next. Um, yeah, you can use models. He, he uses a lot of resources for this assault, but this is, it's okay. You, if you keep him busy for long enough, you will win either way. Killing a lot of economy as well. Getting even the relic here can now even go for the strategic point if he really wants to. And yeah, that's, I do not think he will be able to kill this fire dragon. The fire dragons could be used to decap this or continue assault on the generators here. The scorpions actually do the decap. The wraith guard just moving in. Um, yeah, if you want to have some anti infantry capabilities for them, you do not upgrade the bright lands. You can keep the, uh, the scatter laser, what it is they have. They, they are not no, not bad in ranged, uh, was, was, what I, uh, was, is what I am about to say. Stormtroopers now coming in, but it's a bit too late. The Shadow Spectres are almost reinforced to max, killing this point. He's now trying to get the DK, but I think it's too late. Four, three, two, one, and GG. <laughs> we finished this with a mighty backhand slap of probably this poor guy here. Look at him, he's still in the process of feeling the pain. I think if I, in his size, would have been hit by this backhand, I do not think I would uh, live up as long as he is. So big chat moment for him. Yeah, um, really nice series. Some minor mistakes, of course, but that's always the case. So um, I really like the elder play here uh, overall. Um, yeah, with the, with the rangers and everything. Also, the opener with the grenade launchers I really liked for Kubini to follow up until he wasn't the greatest. As I said, one single turret here would have made his life way more, uh, way easier. But yeah, hindsight 2020. Yeah, GG's um, Odalis takes this game, so he will have another chance against Futumaki. So we have a rewind of the first match in this Group C where Futumaki faced Odalis. And yeah, they both will face again, and the winner of those will commence, co continue in the tournament, and the other one will be out. For real. So, as usual, guys, thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye bye.